Hello world, this is Marcel with Cybergate Studio, back with another video. Today, let's talk about Linux on Windows. Uh, and what I mean by that is like Linux applications being run on Windows in the graphical user interface. So the Windows 10 anniversary update included the ability to run Bash, um, Ubuntu Bash, within Windows. Uh, and uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But this gives us some flexibility. This gives us the power of, uh, at least on a s smaller scale, the power of uh, Linux on Windows, which is fantastic. As you know, if you've seen any of my other videos, I love Linux and I love the command line. So that just makes uh, Windows that much more usable and diverse. Um, so to be able to enable uh, Windows or Bash on Windows, first you come in here to your Windows settings, you come over to update and security for developers, you click on the developer mode, let that load, it says installing developer mode package, it'll be fine. Then you'll come over here, you'll say uh, Windows features on or off, okay? So you can turn Windows features on or off. It'll bring this little window here, and you will come down here. That's what you want. Okay, check that box. Uh, it'll do an update, you have to restart your computer, and all that kind of jazz. Um, and then you'll come in here, Just I usually just click in the Cortana area and say bash. Well, so for this, in this case, as you can see, I've already done it, but you would, it would normally just, it'd come up with a little bash icon. Um, uh, you'd, you'd, it wouldn't come up with the full thing, um, but you will click on that. It'll pull up. Um, it'll pull this up, but then it'll say like, you know, do you want to continue? You say yes. It needs to install a bunch of stuff. You'll give it a new username, which is like your Bash username and a Bash password. Then from there, you just go ahead and do an apt uh, install or apt update. Hello. Oh yeah, sorry. sudo apt up, uh, update. Put in your password. So typically, what you want to do is go ahead and update it. Uh, it may not have much to update if you just installed it, but um, it's been a little bit since I've done it on here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. Okay. So then from there, you just apt or sudo again because you're not running in uh, super user. Or you can just go sudo su, type your password once, and then just do it all the time. But sudo uh, apt upgrade. And you can do a dash y in that line to go ahead and just say automatically yes to everything, or you can let it notify you. And in this case, there are five packages to be upgraded. And I said yes to continue, so they'll go ahead and upgrade now. OK, so now that that is ready, uh, we've just updated a bunch of packages. This is a virtual machine. So this is kind of something I test on. Um, so I'm not really revealing much here, but let's go ahead. I'm going to minimize that now, so it'll be in my little browser here. Um, open a browser. To be able to get the graphical interface, um, the Bash terminal is not really designed for that. Well, but it has the capability of doing um, of doing graphical interface applications, and so uh, one way to do that is through, and I forget what it's called, uh, but the application is called Xming. Um, and I guess the short story of this is uh, it needs a um, the X server application. So it, anything that can run on X server, uh, it, it needs to be able to, uh, win Windows needs to be able to have that to, uh, to be able to run it as a graphical user interface. So this is kind of a similar thing if, if it'll run on uh, on you know the XRDP and stuff this is a similar technology so go ahead and download this from this link so it, uh, see if you see what I did so source sourceforge.net slash project slash xming um, or you can just type into Google xming and it's pretty much the first one here uh, go ahead and download that I've done that already come over here and it's just a quick and easy give it give it your permission there quick and easy install, a bunch of yeses. Um, I did a normal putty link, SSH clan, I don't do anything special. Uh, I went ahead and unchecked um, just uh, the non-US keyboard support just because I'm 
I'm only I only use US keyboards, so uh, 3.4 megabytes. You can save that. Not that big a deal, but hey, it's just what I feel like doing. Okay, I don't need any special launcher because we're not necessarily going to launch it. Um, well, I guess we are going to launch it. Launch. Okay, so now it's just going to sit there. Um, now, so this is just running, ready to go. Uh, you can look at some of the licenses and notes and what kind of look into more what this is. But uh, for our purposes, we're just going to try to get this going. Um, okay, so pulling back up my bash here. Let's go ahead and do a sudo apt install Darktable because that is an excellent. Uh, it's it is an a uh, X server application, or at least it's compatible with X server. Um, and I, I haven't done a lot of testing on it, but this is something that I really enjoy using. It's a actually, in my opinion, a fantastic alternative to Lightroom. So. If you can't afford Lightroom, but you still want to do some just photo editing, you know it's not it's not a replacement for Photoshop. Just you know it's more equivalent to Lightroom, and it is very very nice. Uh, so definitely recommend this. As you can see, we have uh, one newly installed application that's ready. It's got it's about two and a, uh, shy of three megabytes, and so it's going to go ahead and collect that. And you know, like like I said, like this is this is Ubuntu running uh, inside Linux, so. Uh, it's ready here. Um, looks like it's setting it up. Okay, so that is ready. Um, you may, in yours, uh, may take longer. You may have to do a dash Y here to go ahead and just say accept. But otherwise, it is ready to go on my machine. I actually have already done this before to test it out, and then I just uninstalled it. And apparently, the install process is shorter if you're if you already have all the uh, dependencies. <laughs> um, so at this point, then you will do. Uh, one last thing here, and that is export display equals colon zero. And uh, as far as it's from a technical standpoint, um, I won't get into all the details of what that means, but it's essentially just it makes it so you can display. And so now you'll just type your application. So I'll say dark table. And let's see, it found the necessary. Let's go back to that. That was interesting. Oh, this is on a virtual machine. It doesn't want to cooperate. So, oh, duh. Okay. So, uh, let's see, found 64 bit system with uh, plenty of space here. Uh, and so it's set to high quality defaults, which is nice. Um, and so here we go. Now we have Darktable. There we go. For some reason, it opens up above, uh, so that's a little strange. But otherwise, I can totally maximize it. I can import pictures. And there you go. So you can do all your uh, Lightroom needs on Windows. And that's a Linux application running on Windows. Um, so what did you think? This is a short little tutorial. Hope you found it interesting and informative. If you did, uh, comment below. Tell me what applications you've used and if any of, of them that you've tried uh, don't work. Um, and uh, let me know if this helped you out, if you like this kind of content. And while you're down there, like this video and subscribe for more content coming your way.